an African coast, mirages under blazing skies, dreams of another life, realities of steel, the earth ripped open, desert peace pierced by noise. It's been just 40 years since the state of Mauritania was created. Its first industrial fruits, the ore of the desert, the first crazy steps towards industrialized folly. Everything can be bought and sold here. The land, the waters, which are the most abundant fishing grounds in the world. But also one's faith can be exchanged for the lesser values which accompany modernization. The last witnesses of the desert civilizations, the nomads, are abandoning their wandering life. Most of them have settled in towns, searching for the supposed well-being that Western civilization seems to offer. But some still choose to live under their tents, listening to the movement of the sand. These are the last to be faithful to the ancients of the desert. At the western limits of the Sahara, covering more than a million square kilometers of sand, is the Islamic nation of Mauritania. To the north lies Morocco, to the south Senegal, and to the east Algeria and Mali. This land has been traversed by Berber and Arab nomads for centuries. Today, most of the two million inhabitants have chosen to settle. Nouakchott, the capital, grew from nothing at the moment of independence in 1960. Nouadhibou, the former Port Etienne of French colonial days, has become the second town. It sprang up around an ore terminal where iron extracted from the desert is brought for shipment. On this land of men, as the writers Mermoz and Saint-Exupéry described it, the modern world is trying to increase its hold. And little by little, those who live here are losing their references of identity. Nevertheless, in spite of inevitable evolution, some have kept alive their ancestors' ideal of eternal spiritual wandering. Mahmud lives in the heart of Mauritania, in an ancient holy town of Islam, Shingeti. He cherishes his universe and likes to guide visitors so he can pass on the sense of joy he draws from his surroundings. The more level-headed Taleb has developed a serene philosophy of life. He's a fisherman on the Atlantic coast. His rewards come from his contemplation of the deserts and the ocean waves. Bubaka is solitary by nature, but he's surrounded by people. He's dedicated himself to the well-being of children. He gives them French lessons in a little village to the east. The dimensions of their lives are the sky and the dunes. All three are following the same path one which opens the doors to that kind of happiness which derives from total affinity with their world. <laughs> Mahmoud calls in at his family home which is close by Shingeti. He stops at this oasis every month. He has no particular purpose. He simply wishes to make contact with his roots and savor the sense of well-being which this palm grove always offers. It's an oasis called Kimkimta, which is five kilometers away from the town of Chingeti. I was born in one of these huts. There's no escaping the ritual greetings, the questions which have to be politely answered, and the paying of respects which must be offered even to the youngest. I congratulate them because they recite all the Arab alphabet, which is written on the ground. I wrote it myself.
When I was a child, I used to play like this. I was speeding up. But let's leave these kind of games to the children. Mahmoud has the simplicity of the wise man. The trust in an ability to survive in a place where everything has to be built without help, a world without security. He lives in the desert where the daily rhythm is dictated by the caprice of the weather. He thanks Allah for his kindness. That's my field. It's my father's palm grove. We grow watermelons, soya, and millet. When there's no rain, we water the palm. When we've got a bit of time, we, we pull out the grass so that it doesn't use up the plant's water. At the Gatna time, we climb the palm trees like this. We pick the dates and we put them in these bags. They can be kept in the bags for up to five years. Really good. Very, very fresh. The sand, the rocks, the soil of the oasis, a harsh climate, these are the elements which have molded the people of the Sahara. They learn how to conserve their strength and their water and how to nurture their animals. Mahmoud's domain is the Adra, the most beautiful region of Mauritania. Five hundred kilometers away from here, the Sahara dies on the vast beaches of the Atlantic coast. This is Cap Tafari, a nature reserve better known by the name of the Bank Dargan. In this forgotten region, still ignored by tourists, a group of men have gathered in an abandoned village to contemplate their future. The man in the black turban is Taleb. He's considered to be the chief of the group. Bahari is his friend. The sea is their only resource. They love and respect it like the desert. They are men of the faith. Every day they follow the same activity. Every day is the same. We fish with a net. We cast the net at dawn, and the water is low. We come back the following day at the same time. We lift it up then, and we put it back in its place. We find here what we call Corbin, Dorad, Badesh, Bar, Mirou. At the end of the world, there is assistance from no one. They live with nothing and are satisfied with very little. They face many difficulties. Today, they're trying to find the fishing net, which yesterday they'd lost in the sea. We haven't found the net yet. We should normally put a float on it, but we lost it. Mm. 
It's here. There. We fish to survive. It's subsistence fishing. We consume what we need. The rest is dry. The name of the village is Arkis. It's always existed. My great-grandparents have always lived there. On toujours habité ici. But in 1957, they had to leave it. They settled in town. It was in April 1994 that I came back here as a fisherman. I was born somewhere in the desert, under a tent. I lived there for two or three years. Mon père était déjà en vie pour travailler. Then I left in 1965 to go to Mwadibou. Et j'ai été rejoint par les membres de la tribu. J'ai quitté l'école. After my school years, j'ai fait toutes ces années en ville. J'ai tapé à toutes les portes. I knocked on every door. Je suis parti partout. J'ai tapé à toutes les portes. Je n'ai pas eu, malheureusement. Toutes les portes se sont refermées devant moi. Et j'ai voulu... Comment dirais-je so, Je suis venu ici pour exploiter la richesse wealth, dont nous disposons ici. Disposal here. Et puis c'est tout. So. Voilà. Pas grand-chose, mais... <coughs> It's not a lot. On a la pêche, on a le poisson, we on a le strict minimum, de, le minimum vital, le strict minimum vital. No more than that is Pas necessary. Toujours, mais on l'a, on a mangé, on a There's boire. no stress. On a le calme, le repos, pas de stress. Et on and a the desert is only two kilometers two away. Kilometers. The vast desert. Voilà, le grand désert. The fascination of the desert is permanent, even for the people who've known nothing else. In its silence, in its endless space, the Sahara remains a place of mystery and spirituality. Far away, to the east of the country, nestling between the dunes and a hill, lies a town, Kamu. Spread along the only tarmac road, the route to the frontier with Mali. There are many children here, and their families choose to send them either to public or Quranic religious schools. At the non-religious primary school, they're taught the concept of nationhood, a new ideal that past generations had never encountered. The lessons are given in Arabic, but a few hours a week are dedicated to learning French. Boubacar is in charge of these lessons. It's a primary school with first to sixth year classes. 
Elle est fréquentée par euh, There are about 300 pupils. 300 élèves, donc la majorité Most of them des garçons. Boys. There are six teachers with one teaching French. I'm the French teacher. Why does someone choose to be a teacher? Well, I suppose it's because you just love your job. If I can term it like this, I'm speaking for myself. I became a teacher because I just love my job. Fatigue. Fatigue. As from the third year, the children are taught 5 hours of French and 25 hours of Arabic per week. I have in total 20 hours of French lessons to give per week. What I like the most in this job is children. I like to be in contact with children. I love to take care of children. Everything children do fascinates me. Boubacar's sense of vocation was formed in his teenage years. He finished his studies in the public school at Rosseau to the south of the country. He was posted to Kamur, and although he regrets the fact that he's far away from his family, here he can best use his teaching skills. But he's also a contemplative. He meditates on the world around him and on the laws of Islam. So I'm preparing myself for the prayer. I'm washing myself. Religion is very important for me. It's a reference. A reference you could never doubt. It's a support. The desert is in perpetual mutation. The land and the life here have undergone many changes. In Paleolithic times, the Sahara used to be a wet region with luxuriant soil watered by wide rivers. Man has had to adapt to the changes, to the desertification which has gone on around him. Here's Chinguetti. It's my favorite of all the Mauritanian towns. First of all, it's a holy town of Islam. And the people are, are really warm-hearted. The original town of Chinguetti was actually built in 770 AD. 
a lot of people used to live here. It was a big caravanning centre between Black and Western Africa. A lot of Quranic universities and mosques were built here. And many people used to come here to study. There were at least a dozen mosques at that time. And you see, that's why we call it the Holy Town. That's the reason. Right. Now, here you can see the old town. Because the people have abandoned the most of the land now. Uh, uh, this time there are no more than two or three houses which people still live in, you see. Uh, people have left because, well, either because of the droughts or, or maybe because they wanted to experience a more modern way of life. Mahmoud, the guide, often takes visitors to the library of his family. Here, he can share with them his love of his people's history. In the 14th and 15th centuries, many holy men, philosophers and healers settled in this caravan town. They left many manuscripts behind them. Look, the manuscripts are protected in these cardboard boxes. The other ones are printed books. These ones you see over here. You see? Here they are. The library is a family library. I'm the one in charge of it. My job is to clean it and restore the books when they need to be restored. That's my, my task. Now, here's an old manuscript that... Well, it was date from the 15th century. It's a book which praises the prophet Muhammad. Chingeti was the place where all the Adra pilgrims gathered before journeying to Mecca. The spirit of the past is still impregnated in the stones of the village, though the winds continually push the sands and little by little bury this place of prayer. In Cap Tafari, fishing is the main source of income. The catch will dry for a few days in the sun, then it will be stocked until a buyer arrives. We're 260 kilometers north of Nouakchott and 208 kilometers southwest of Wadi Bou. Fish is transported by car, it's a bush taxi. Sometimes a merchant comes here to buy it. We sell our produce in Nouakchott or in Wadibu. But the income from its selling is it's very low. It's about 10,000 weekends per month, which represents about 300 French francs. Here in Arcus, we have two tiny pirogues with paddles. We're not allowed to use motorized boats because we're in a nature reserve. So, so we depend on the wind and the flow of the waters.
The situation of the community is precarious, but there's no resentment, no jealousy of a richer lifestyle. To have enough to survive is sufficient. On the edge of poverty, they are a happy people. Hey Bernard. This, this evening we're going into the bush. Later this afternoon. The bush begins just a few kilometers to the interior. A few hardy plants can grip the earth here. The nomads chant by and normally stay for a few days. Ancestral tradition is perpetuated in these makeshift camps. Here they beat the camel hair and weave it into the essential material used for making their tents. When mixed with the wool of the black sheep, camel hair is the best isolation, both in summer and winter. This is how they create the big square of material which will become a kaima, the tent which is used for the hospitality of guests. Hospitality is obligatory, it's the law of the desert. Any stranger has to be welcomed, fed and sheltered as long as he wants to stay. It's the desert which has demanded this solidarity. Around Cap Tuffery, there's a general sense of well-being. Daily life is peaceful, undisturbed. The people here can turn their eyes to the desert or the sea. They have not yet been dispossessed of their innocence. They are not driven by the new god of consumerism. In Kamur, the school teachers are in charge of sports activities. They don't care about the lack of facilities, about the inappropriate clothes. All that matters is to have fun. There is no electricity and no running water in the village. The cinema and television are still unknown. But they make a good life with what they have. <laughs> Classes often take place in the rooms of houses rented for the year. Learning to write in French is essential to the children's education. It's easier for them to assimilate writing than the complex oral language of their people. Writing in French is different from speaking it. To write, you only need to draw letters. Children learn to write very fast. Well, spoken French requires a lot more time. Fatma a joué avec Sidi et ses camarades, mais les garçons l'ont poussé. Bien. Là, 
récréation. J'avais tout ce que c'est là. Récréation. À 10 heures. Le matin à 10 heures, les élèves sortent en récréation. Récréation. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de moyens à l'école. There's not much funding at our school. Nous, les maîtres, même, on manque de bureaux. The teachers don't have desks. Les élèves n'ont pas là où s'asseoir. The children have to sit on the floor. Ils n'ont pas aussi de livres. The children don't have books or notebooks. Donc ça manque vraiment de moyens. Je les fais écrire les textes. They have to write the text here, as they don't have books at home. Beaucoup d'entre eux. I didn't choose to live in Kamuro. I was sent here. I've been here now for six years. I go to see my family in Rosso during the summer holidays. Rosso is very far away from here. It's about 700 kilometers away. So I can't see them every day. The lessons don't require a lot of preparation. I've been teaching the same lessons for six years. And I've always taught for the same classes. My first hobby is reading the Quran. I have the slate. And I have some books. I haven't yet married. I earn about 600 French francs per month. It's not enough to get married. One of the principal tasks of Mahmoud is to manage his family house, and he often receives visitors there. Tea drinking is an important Mauritanian tradition. We drink it under the tent. The most widespread of the living traditions of the desert is the drinking of tea, an event which takes place several times a day. Its preparation is a ritual. Decanting the liquid is a show. Some call tea the Mauritanian whiskey, because in this Muslim country, alcohol is forbidden, and this is the social drink. are musicians, dancers and singers. They all belong to the same caste. The survival of these griots is essentially linked to their music. It's their only source of income. They come with their families to ceremonies and parties and flatter their clients with the lyrics of their songs. These griots are sometimes feared and even hated because they can hold anyone who refuses to give them money up to ridicule by humiliating them in their performance. The griots are people who play traditional music. La musique traditionnelle. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui aiment bien cette musique. Parfois, quand on se met en couple, on veut faire un mariage, on veut inviter des gens. Les petits dîners.
In an old merchant's house, Mahmud has collected together different objects, evidence of the Saharan traditions which he is safeguarding. This is an old tea box, which used to be for carrying the tea set around. The nomads used to travel with it at all times. The Mauritanians are nomads, people who want to keep their traditions alive. They've got a real sense of hospitality, they're Muslims. In this society, the women live apart from the men, although it's they who run businesses and organize family life. Mahmoud likes their company. He often goes to this cooperative store where clothes are manufactured. Another of Mahmoud's favorite places is the former French fort of Shingeti, on the opposite side of town. I often come here. It's a beautiful place. The view is fantastic, especially in the evening. You can hardly hear anything. It's quiet and it's peaceful. I love it. A witness to the colonial years, the ruins of the French administration still dominate, but it's crumbling to dust year by year. In Cap Chaffery, a new fishing net is cast into the waters, under the scrutiny of Taleb, who's decided to stay ashore today. My dream at the moment is, is a fisherman's dream, by a good boat, a sailboat, and to go fishing with it on the sea, to go that little bit further. Dans des endroits où il y a, il y a plus de places where there, where there are more fish. Et, et être un peu sûr de, de course, revenir au village. Sure to come back safely to the village. On est à la merci du vent. We depend on the winds. Quand le vent souffle d'est. When the wind blows from the east. On a toujours We're peur d'aller en mer. To to parce qu'on est entraîné because par le courant vers l'ouest, vers up the high sea. Il faut combattre we quand on revient. Fight against it. Paddle. Et, and not be caught by a wave. Religion. Religion. Religion gives me uh, a real interior peace. I'm, I'm a true believer. It's, um, how should I say this? It's, it's difficult. It's difficult in any other language except your mother tongue. It's, uh, it's as the philosopher says, religion is the opium of the people. It gives me a reason to live. 
and de ne pas céder à, à aux tentations temptation, d'avoir à, d'être honnête to be honest, de, and to, comment dirais-je uh, how should I say this, uh, de travailler dur to pour hard pour for everything. And to treat others et, et mon, mon prochain, as mon we would like to be treated. On va de temps en temps sur la falaise. From time to time, pour pêcher à la ligne. we go on the cliffs to go line fishing. C'est quand on a les filets we go there sec, quand on met les filets to clean the fishing les, nets, pour les nettoyer des algues, to get all the seaweed off. Quand elles sont sales, when they're dirty, ou sinon quand il n'y a pas or assez de poissons dans les filets, pour, 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 pour faire manger tout le monde. Heureusement, on est toujours sur Luckily, the sea pas always rien. serves us. Je dirais qu'on, qu'on peut appeler We could call Tafarit, Tafarit le coin the place à la touche minute. Of a fish a minute. Fish des dorades, des, des big sars. sized fish. Dorades. Des merous. Merous. Des truites, des badèches. Badèches. Des corbines, des grosses big catches. De, it can go up to 50, 50 kilos, 54 pounds. The afternoon ends with a cup of tea prepared by the only two women who remain in the village. In Kamur, Bubakar lives very close to the Quranic school, the rival of his primary school. In this school, called a Mahadra, the children follow only a religious education. There are about 33 pupils in this Mahadra.
I often listen to Radio France International to know what's happening in the world. It's the only way to stay in touch with the rest of the world. This is how people live in Chinguetti, in Kaptafari, and Kamur. The winds perpetually mold and move the dunes, and Mahmoud, Taleb, and Boubacar build their universe around a spirituality in which there is no place for compromise or mediocrity. By listening to the desert and to their god, these sons of the sand have opened the doors to their own paradise. I'm writing Allah's name. It's God's name. Because I've been very happy today. 